Hey guys and welcome back. Let's talk about aircraft air conditioning systems as well as pressurization. There's a lot to unpack here, but stick with me. I'll try to make it as simple as possible. The primary purpose of air conditioning is to keep the fuselage pressurized. And secondly, it keeps the aircraft at proper temperatures and freshness. In normal conditions, the pneumatic systems that supply air to the air conditioning system usually comes from the main engine compressor, secondary APU compressor, and on the ground, we can utilize ground air supply units. As I said, passenger comfort is very important, especially on a hot day. Since we are utilizing hot compressed air coming from the engines, this hot compressed air needs to be cooled, conditioned, and then supplied to the fuselage compartments. Once that is done, it has to be dumped overboard via the outflow valve, which I'll show you later. Here's a nice example of what the APU looks like outside of the aircraft. Now let's go through some component location of the pack itself. Pack standing for pressurization air conditioning kits. Starting from the ram air inlet and moving aft, we notice this first unit right here. This is called the condenser, which leads to the water extractor. All this is coming from the air cycle machine, which is right here. Moving aft, we will notice two big units. These are your heat exchangers, two per pack, primary and secondary. And up top, that is your flow control valve. This is how the air gets regulated. Along with multitude of sensors and electrical lines to give indication in the flight deck, this pack is very efficient. Here's a nice little diagram for you so you can get a visual on this. And here's a quick look at the exhaust of the pack as well. The two air conditioning packs decrease the temperature and the water contained within the hot bleed air coming from the engines or the pneumatic systems. Heat exchangers decrease the temperature of the air and the air cycle machine first compresses the air and then expands it. The condenser will remove any kind of water in the air and reintroduce it back into the heat exchangers just like this. It's an efficient way of cooling down the pack, especially on ground operations. There's also a reheater unit it lies between the main heat exchanger and the condensers. Hot air from the main heat exchanger increases the temperature of the cold air from the water extractor. Just as a reminder, all this is being fed back into the ECS system, the environmental control system, all monitored by the computer. Most major aircraft work this way. Once all that air is preconditioned, it is sent back up into the cabin via all this ducting. You also can have ducting going into the cargo bays to heat them because we do carry live animals in the cargoes. From the outside perspective, the system looks complicated, but when you take a step back, it's not that hard. Imagine the same thing as your car, but instead of using Freon, now we're utilizing air. On a side note, air conditioning is also part of avionics cooling. Those computers get pretty hot. We'll utilize outside air to cool down all these systems. As technology progresses and we take a look at the aircraft such as the 787, bleed air is no longer necessary. What they use is cabin air compressors. It basically works the exact same way, but instead of utilizing bleed air or the pneumatic source from the engines, now these compressors are electrically driven. But the concept is very much the same. It still utilizes heat exchangers, condensers, and reheaters. Now onto the inside of the aircraft. We have to take in consideration now that we have all this air coming in, we need to regulate it and control it. The temperature that is. This is done by trim air valves. Pilots can select the temperature that is desired within the flight deck. All this is monitored through the aircraft systems. It could also be deactivated if needed. This takes us to cabin pressurization. Now that we have all this air that's being pumped into the aircraft, and the aircraft is pressurized, it has to find a way out, and it utilizes an outflow valve. This is what regulates the pressure within the aircraft. Majority of time, it's an automated function, and it will do it automatically, but it can be switched into manual mode if needed. And there's your outflow valve. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Have a great flight. Take care.